Hi and welcome back. Some of my regular viewers and subscribers will know that I've got a laser cutter. Uh, I use that extensively for plastics and timbers and um, cutting out and engraving onto. But I'm getting more and more cool now for engraving onto cylindrical items. Uh, wedding flutes, um, glasses, bottles, uh, drinks containers, uh, drinks bottles, wed you know, all sorts of items in there. So I thought, well, I really need to build one of these. So I've been gathering some parts which I've got laid out on the table there. We'll have a look at those and then we'll have a look at a picture of a design which I've copied from just a Chinese website. So anyway, we'll go over to the table and we'll have a look. So here's our drawing of the one we're going to copy. So just to explain the layout, what we've got is we've got a fixed end and we've got a movable end. So we need to make that movable so we can obviously engrave onto a bottle or we can engrave onto a small glass. So the fixed end will have a stepper motor and we'll go through a series of gears and drive belt and drive these two larger wheels. And at the other end, these two wheels will just be free rolling. On the beam itself where the, this end will move up and down, we've got a piece of 4020 V-slot profile. And we've got the V-slot wheels to match that profile. And that will allow us to move the end you know, up and down as well as in and out. Uh, the gears on this version are flanged bearings, not the gears, sorry, the bearings are flanged bearings. Um, I haven't got any of those, all I've got is some old roller skate bearings, so they're going to be ideal. And how I'm going to fix those in um, is we're going to make the holes slightly smaller than the bearing and then we'll just push fit those in and that will be ideal for this um, situation. Uh, the On the original one here they've used O-rings on the wheels but I haven't got no O-rings but I have got some rubber 4mm rubber belt so what I'll do is I'll create these wheels and wrap the belt round and then glue the ends together and that will give us our you know to grip onto the bottle to turn it. And we've got a series of rods here uh, this is silver steel so we're going to make these um, drive pins out of silver steel we'll have to thread these and then obviously you know we'll be able to get our connections onto those and what else have we got we've got a couple of um, these things here which will go into the V-slot and we can use those as a clamp system so when we move this end in and out we can actually clamp it down by using these thumb screws and the other thing we need to have a look at as well we've got two of these V-wheels on one side of the beam and we've got one on the other so we need to be able to adjust this wheel in and out so we can get a tight fit onto this beam and I've got some cam nuts here which um, they've got the center hole off center and we can just spin that around and that will give us a an adjustment you know on pulling that wheel in closer and getting a tight fit so anyway we'll go over to the laser cutter and we'll start cutting some of these parts out this is our original set of drawings just to get the spacings correct for the wheels and then this side is the actual um, pieces what we're going to be cutting out so all these pieces here are going to be cut out of black 10mm acrylic and then the wheels we're going to cut out of white 3mm acrylic and we're going to make those in a sandwich um, the, in between the sandwich we're going to have a smaller disc and that will allow us to glue like I was saying the glue the solid rubber around them and that will be the you know how we can make those wheels anyway we'll concentrate on doing these first uh, what we're going to have to have a look at first though is to get these bearing holes right so this is a 20 mil, 22 mil bearing so if I cut that hole at about 21.5 that should just give us enough to push those bearings in and not be you know obviously too tight um, acrylic is pretty good but it doesn't move that much so you know it's quite a rigid quite a material so if we try and push this through a too small a hole it's just going to crack especially on these ones here where we've got the thinner edges so we'll get that set up and get the a sample cut first and then we'll go from there once we've got that um, sorted we can then cut the whole lot out
This is our bearing test. So I've just taken the bearing hole straight out of the drawing and sized that to 21.5. So that's obviously going to sit in there and then we're just going to cut the whole lot out and then we'll have a look on the bench and just see if we can press that bearing in without distorting the outside. So we'll move over to the laser cutter and we'll get that set up and then we'll cut that piece out. So here's our piece and we'll have a look and see how this bearing goes in. So just going to start in there so we should just be able to push that straight in. Oh, that's tight but that's going to work and what I'll do is I'll just clamp that in the vise. So if we just take, I'll leave on the protective covering just so, because um, if we don't leave that on, we get all the burn marks from the laser, you know, from the laser dust. So we'll just have a look and we'll get that pressed in there. So there it is pressed in. So yeah, so that, that's right, 21.5mm is ideal, and we aren't bulging the sides out here. So, all good, so we can now carry on, and we can cut these parts out. That's all the laser parts cut, so we'll just push all these bits out. This one here has obviously not burnt all the way through for some reason. But we'll be able to get that out in a minute. So next job is to push these bearings into their holes. So we'll get that sorted. Uh, we're just going to um, squeeze them in on the vise, which is the easiest thing.
Right, so that's that done. Thank <laughs> you.